Hey guys, it's Dukon Red one and welcome to episode 6 of Chateau de Lumiere. We are going to be working on this bit right here, that little orange above my head, and the yellow above my head. We are going to be working on the craftsman building today. This is where the blacksmith, the carpenter, and other such people of that type would be. Uh, the car craftsman's building is going to have the carpenter blacksmith. There may be other sorts of craftsmen in here as we go on, depending on how much room we have. Now, when you think of a blacksmith, you're going to need things like a smelter, stuff like that. I'm thinking about either putting the smelter here or over here. We're going to have to figure that out at some point, and we'll definitely figure that out eventually. But for right now, um, I'm not going to really say anything in stone because when we are doing the replay, things are most likely going to change. So just keep that in mind. So the outside of this, I'm going to have to figure out something special to do with it. I don't want it to be very plain. I want it to be not ornate either. I want it to be defensible and I want it to make sense. So we'll be working on that for sure. Um, I like how this comes out a little bit here. It means you can shoot down. Like maybe there will be an arrow slit right here that you can shoot this way and down and such. And then all along this wall back here is going to be arrow slits so that you can shoot down on the enemy as they are coming up. And then possibly we'll have a walkway, a balcony, or a maybe some belvederes on the corners and then maybe a walkway just like the top of this tower, kind of like the gatehouse possibly. I don't know, we'll see what happens, but it definitely has to be for defensible. Maybe just on the back side is where we'll have a walkway, but we'll figure that out as we move on. We'll also be coming up with a wall design, something that I've been wanting to do. I am thinking covered and I am thinking not covered, so I don't know, we'll figure that out. Um, I feel like if we have, eh, it might look nice. It might look nice. I, I might uh, go with that, but I'm just thinking when you like look from above, I don't want it to be all like red roofs, which still would look nice. I mean, obviously from up above, you'll see all the stone as well from the ends. It'll have stone ends and everything, but um, even with that, I think that uh, we'll, we'll figure it out, of course. But yeah, the Craftsman's Building, and uh, so yeah, that is about it. We're going to be splitting this episode in two today. We're going to be doing the exterior in one episode, that's this episode, and then the next episode we will be doing the interior. Two very different separate portions of the build, plus there will probably be some sort of cellars under there, but that tower took 32 minutes of footage to make and I don't want this footage to take that long so we'll be shortening it up a little bit and trying to make it a little bit more um, a little bit more viewer friendly should I say 32 minute videos while some people like that not all do but um, yeah I hope you guys enjoy the following footage and uh, let's get started to begin, we're going to be working on the batter at the foundation of the building. That is the sloping out bit right there. And we also decided to add in this tower. I really wanted to add in a little bit more of a defensive feature on the back, a little place where soldiers can collect and shoot down on the enemies coming up the causeway. So that's what I did there. We raise up the portion above the blacksmith area which I thought was a really good idea. I thought that uh, there just need to be a little bit more room down there. It also adds variation on the interior, so I think that looks a little bit better. So we're working on the walls, we're bringing those up, we're making it seem a little bit more, um, we're getting the shape, we're shaping it out. That's, that's what's important when you're building something, of course, is you wanna shape it out, you wanna figure out exactly what you wanna do. You'll notice that the back side is a little bit taller in stone than the front side. I did that on purpose. I just thought it looked a little bit better. It's only slightly, only two blocks higher, but still it's a little bit of a asymmetry value that really helps the build work out a little bit a little bit more. The crenellations on the front, obviously all that's going to be where the defensive part of this building is going to be. Again, those arrow slits and stuff. I also changed the positioning of that wall. It was back a little bit, but I moved it forward because I want there to be a smelter and a forge back there where the blacksmith is, so I needed more room. So this building right here, I'm not sure quite what's going to go in here. Probably some sort of craftsman, maybe the carpenter or something up there. But uh, underneath that's going to be the gate that leads from the front ward into the middle ward. 
So heading around the building here, we're going to be working on the back and this side, I want to be a little bit more fancy because this is where the Lord is going to see the most. This is the interior part of the castle it needs to be a little bit more, looks a little bit more um, like well, well built and preserved and stuff like that. And so that's, we get to that later on. You'll definitely see that shape up. So the texturing phase now, we're adding in all the textures, the travertine as the battlements, the diorite brick as the main walls, the red clay as the roof, and we use the yellow clay for above the gate right there. That really adds in the contrast values. Now see if that was just stone across there where that yellow clay is, it would not look near as good as it does in the end, but adding that yellow clay really does work. Um, so we're coming up, I decided I wanted to go with a covered wall design instead of having an open wall design i just feel like it it just connects the build so much better for a build for a, a, a sh castle or a chateau this condensed it just makes sense to have covered walls just connecting everything versus having open walls so we work on the back um, support structure of that wall of the roof and i think that turned out really well you'll see that later in the video of course you'll see the rest of this later in the video as we walk around so we're working on the defensive fortifications on the top, and we also build a balcony on the front here that adds, again, contrast value and depth. When you look at it from above, you'll see that the porch really adds in an extra layer. It makes it look a whole lot better. Uh, again, I say a whole lot better a lot, so. Now we're gonna be working on an artistic bit on the top. As you can see, we add in those iron bars on the crest of the roof. That really adds in a little bit more of that fan, that, uh, what do you call it, the ornamental look of the build that we're going for. The Lumiere just is supposed to be very fancy, and that really helps a lot. I got the idea from Spawn from uh, the Reforged server. So these are some dormers around. I just added the one on the left is the one for the window, and the one on the right is the door that leads out to the, the ramparts up there. And so this back here is, now we're working on the fancy bit back here. As you can see, we have that little tower right there. We'll probably start the stairs midway up. We also have that fancy yellow clay to add in a little bit more contrast on this back side, same as the front side. And then right here, we add that dormer in on the top. I thought just to need a little bit more uh, work and we I made it even versus odd as it was before. It just didn't work. And we also add an even window on the front side, which, um, makes it a little less uh, you know, symmetrical on the end, and I think that works out. And then we add that balcony and also the stairway up to the door of that building, and I think that really adds in the texturing and variation we need in order to make this side really pop. So for the back side, I decide I want to remove all that and make it a little bit more fancy. So we add in this back porch with a recess where there's going to be um, what ends up being Italian stone. I used clays at first because I was like, hmm, maybe we could try something, you know, maybe we could try this, try that. And that's just how building goes. You just want to try things. You want to get the contrast values. If you have any flat walls that are really like standing out to you, figure something out for it. And in the end, it will turn out pretty nice. And then as you can see, we made it fortified because again, this side is supposed to be very defensible against the enemies coming up the causeway. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the final result and I hope you guys learned something and I will see you guys soon. So here we are, the finished version of the exterior of the Craftsman's building. I'm really happy with it. I really think it turned out quite well. Uh, it really works well in terms of contrast, in terms of organic, adding an organic feature to the build. So will the servants building over there and the stables slash warehouse right there. But I think overall this turned out really well. That yellow really adds in that contrast value between the gray walls and the red. See, if it was just gray walls all the way up to the red, this area would not have the same effect however with those with that tan stucco that we used right there it really works well well technically it's the name of its yellow stucco stucco but it looks more tan in my opinion so it works that way so but yeah I love it a lot I really like how this turned out this is gonna be where the blacksmith is going to be over here we'll probably put the forge somewhere in that area we'll put the smelter right here the forge is where they actually make the steel uh, where well, they actually make like the swords and the horseshoes, the nails and everything. The smelter is where they take raw materials like say if they 
have just a bunch of iron dust, they would just put that into the smelter. And then there was a, a process to where they would heat it up and the heat would create enough um, enough viscosity with the, the metal that it would drip down through the coals to the bottom and then those particles would condense into a solid material that they would, once the, once the smelter is done, pull out and use for forging. So that's how the iron, steel, all that stuff is made. Well, I think steel is a different process. It's more pure, but I don't quite understand. Never mind. Um, but that's the general idea. Blacksmith will be here. This is where his little workshop will be in here, but all of like the out, like all the fire stuff will be outside. I really like how the inside of the wall turned out. That little bit of contrast right there with the oak and also the trap doors like that, the spruce and then a little bit of red. I think that turned out pretty well. Now the outside, yeah, the outside looks pretty good. I like it. I'm talking about the roof. I like the outside of the wall for sure, but yeah, as far as the roof's concerned. But I think it'll work. I'm just thinking, just talking about the how the blo how it's blocky right here. I think that that uh, didn't turn out quite as I wanted to. It's not as smooth, but it still works pretty well. But the travertine, as you can tell, the lighter stone, I bled the normal stone brick up into that travertine in order to transition between the textures below and to the travertine. Otherwise, if that was all travertine on the top, just like that up there, it would have been way too sudden. Like it would have been way too straight of line of light stone. So that uh, little bit of normal stone brick in there really helps. And I think that worked out pretty well. The back of the building, I like this a lot. You have a very defensive back. You have all these arrow slits and things. And then you have this porch right here. I'm not quite sure who's gonna live inside there. We'll have to figure that out at some point and for sure um, make it look good in the end. So anyways, back to in here, you got the porch right here for up at that section and the building across. So we'll go in through here. There'll probably be a swing gate in here. That's what I'm thinking, a little swing gate where they can do, you know, where they can defend the castle. Maybe there'll be two swing gates in here. I'm not sure. And then there'll be some murder holes in between and maybe some arrow slits along the, the walls on either side. That would make sense, I, I'm pretty sure. So this is where the, this is the inner ward of the castle. Well, technically this is the inner ward, but this is the, like, the main inner ward. This will be more of like a garden over here, whereas this is where all the, all the preparation and castle-y stuff will occur, because the stables are gonna be right there. There's probably, yeah, the well's probably gonna be down there, but there's gonna be some like workshop stuff in here, things of that sort, it's gonna look nice. And the idea is when you look around, it's gonna look very fancy, because uh, there's going to be a building built over this to from that from the tower to the Lord's residence, there's that little tower there. The front of this is gonna look rather fancy, and I'm, I'm really excited to do all that. And then we'll probably put something there, because that does not look very good. Hmm, we'll figure that out later. But uh, one way or the other, I think that this is gonna turn out pretty good. We got the turret right here, which will serve semi as a stair tower. Uh, I think the stair will actually start on this floor. Um, I'm not sure what we'll do down here. We'll figure that out, but we want the, you know, the stairs to be sort of mismatched, not so that, you know, you can just get into one tower and get all the way to the top. We want it to be confusing, relatively. But, uh, yeah, I like this in here. You got the big windows, you got the little balcony right there, and then again, you have the tan to transition between the textures, the red, and the stone underneath. So, I really like how that turned out. You got the finials along the crests of the dormers, and that's about it. That's, uh, that is the overall design of Lumiere. We'll get the interiors done in the next episode, as this episode we just want to try to break it up a little bit more so that there is uh, not, not no longer those 32 minute long episodes that uh, we've had in the past. So, Oh yeah, another thing that's really cool is this little bit of the iron bars here at the top that uh, is more of a gothic look, but still, you can still feel that chateau. You can still see, you know, it still looks like French to, to me at least, and I think it works out pretty well. Uh, but it adds a little bit of a artistic touch to the top, a little bit of a fancy touch, so it's not just plain clay right there. So that's why I added in that the iron bars. 
So, um, but yeah, next episode we'll probably either work on the stables here or this section over here. I'm thinking more this over here, but i um, not totally sure. We'll figure that out eventually. And uh, for sure, I will see you guys on the next one, hopefully. So if you guys like the video, don't forget to hit that like button. If you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to comment below and tell me what you guys think. Also, I have a Facebook and a Twitter that you can follow me on and a Twitch where I live stream. And uh, if you guys want to support me monetarily, there is a Patreon link in the description as well. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I look forward to the next one. Till then, bye-bye. Uh,